uh, female athletes in uh, sports in general and in windsurfing it's very uh, you know low le- the level of competition the level of female participants you know so in the near future i hope we have more female uh, sailors uh, in india i hope we take up this sport of course it is a physically demanding sport you know it is we are doing it in the hot sun a lot of females maybe like wouldn't uh, you know but it, we need more female athletes in, in sports do you think government also should need to do something to promote this sport uh, yes and especially in goa i believe you know because we have all the resources we need the main thing is we have such a beautiful beach you know if you see in bombay they don't have like beaches like how we have and it is so polluted and so dirty uh the the beach over there in goa we have the right kind of resources we have the right kind of training facilities also you know for beginners to join this sport and i think a little push from the government from the sports authorities uh towards this sport also would really help you know i mean we have football camps we have uh, so many various things for other sports but i believe sailing is a beautiful sport and it keeps you physically very fit i think this is what is needed and what should be promoted in the, the youth you know like for youth i think sports is something that needs to be in every household people should be encouraging their kids to take up sports because it teaches you discipline it builds character you know in a child and if you teach us a uh, child the discipline of sport trust me they will not go into any wrong direction see in goa everything is freely available but if you have discipline and self control and if you focus on your goals like we are doing then this i think that's going to be a really good change for the uh, generation that is yet to come so what happens to the association that is there in goa uh so i mean as you asked me before also like you said uh, in uh, taekwondo the association has come to receive them from the airport and you know they have a lot of uh, support from the association but uh, sadly uh there is this kind of miscommunication that happens with me and my association i believe you know because i'm not getting the uh support i want honestly from them um i really don't know what else to say i mean i'm hoping that now as an athlete it was my duty to represent goa and represent india and qualify for my country as an athlete that is my duty but it is also the duty of the officials from now on to take it forward you know see whatever i have done i have uh, in iq foiling i have learned only because of my father who is my coach now at this level national uh, coaches are charging a bomb at this level national uh, coaches are charging a bomb you know to learn but thankfully i have had the resources of my father and uh, my brother also that is how i was able to learn and now this new sport that is iq foiling it is so technical and there are so many new things to learn and over the this last year i have learned it all by myself like even in the races sometimes i'm not knowing what i'm doing wrong or right because i have not got uh, the kind of coaching what other uh, athletes have been getting you know uh, i have not got in any kind of foreign uh, coaching in this uh, field in iq foiling uh, and i think that is important i mean you know now that i have qualified india for the asian games it's a huge uh, you know matter of pride for me but it's also a huge responsibility on my shoulders and in order to do well i would require right kind of coaching i mean how can i uh, perform well without the coaching you know and over here i'm training just with uh, my brother so there's very less uh, scope of improvement because we are both new at this sport we are both learning but if you train with a field uh, like if you train with a group of other sailors there is a lot of more things you can learn there is a lot of uh, scope uh, like in other countries like if you see the best countries right now there is china hong kong they are sailing in a fleet of you know more than 10 people at all times so when you have that kind of a fleet when you're at that level of competing you're only getting better but if you're sailing alone there is very less uh, chance of improvement okay what about the financial support and all that how does that help you uh so i haven't honestly been receiving a lot of financial support in my sport it is a uh, you know it is quite an expensive sport and uh, to sustain in this sport it is very hard because uh, when it comes to financial support i have received my prize money from 2011 this uh, last year so from 2011 whatever i won i've received it last year so you can imagine you know it's it's a very delayed process but thanks to 
uh, the sports minister, you know, Mr. Govind Gaudi, he has been taken uh, my last case, uh, which was uh, for Thailand, where I won the first silver medal for India in IQ foiling. Uh, I got a little bit of financial support for that particular event. But we need to constantly be doing uh, Asian Championships, European circuits. Now, I want to start my campaign for the Asian Games and I do require financial support for that. So what's your message to the people? Like, uh... So for everyone who has been watching and who has been following my journey, I would like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. All your wishes, I'm reading them. And you know, my inbox is full every time I win. Uh, everyone is so... Uh, Okay. Uh, so it feels great after winning the third round of uh, trials which were held in Bombay. This was the Asian Games trials. It was held just almost after one week after the second uh, round. Uh, these were definitely the toughest conditions I've sailed in because uh, we had in some races winds uh, gusting over 20 uh, knots. And uh, 20 knots is, uh, you know, something uh, different. For the first time, I have sailed in that kind of uh, wind and especially foiling in that wind was uh, quite a challenge for me. Uh, okay, so how was the experience? So it was a good experience, you know, uh, sailing with the top athletes in India, fighting for a spot at the Asian Games. So it was a very good learning experience for me. I've learned a lot from my fellow competitors. Uh, so it was a good experience. In, in okay, so how were the weather conditions? Uh, so it was extremely hot, you know, in uh, Bombay, it was extremely hot, uh, extreme weather conditions and also the wind was really strong uh, towards the end of the competition. Uh, normally we like strong winds, but foiling in this wind was something new for me. Uh, so that was a bit of a challenge for me to sail in that kind of uh, wind condition, but it was good. It was a good experience for me. Okay. Uh, there, are, there are two ways of sailing in the water, as you all know. Now, recently they yes. have switched to another way. Now, which is the one you are? Uh, two ways in the in the sense is basically we were windsurfing before with a board and a sail. Now, the new uh, Olympic sport basically is IQ foiling. It's an upgrade to windsurfing. So, the only difference being we have a huge foil underneath our board that elevates from the surface. So, it kind of is uh, much faster than windsurfing in, in certain winds. So that is basically just an upgrade to windsurfing. Okay. So overall now, how is your qualifying round that was? Held? Yes. So uh, currently I am the only female Indian to have ever qualified uh, twice in a, in consecutive Asian Games from India in uh, windsurfing. Okay. Yeah. This, um... So these were the three qualifying rounds that we had. Uh, all held in Mumbai. It's a brown gem though. And these are all three gold. Three gold. Yeah. So you have been winning only gold and uh, what, what's the secret now you want to tell people? <laughs> There's no secret uh, honestly. I mean if we had more women in this sport it would have been uh, quite a challenge also. Women in sports in general, you know, there are not a lot of uh, female athletes in... Uh... So expensive. Today, I mean, just before 10 days, I bought one quotation, which I wanted to buy. It is costing almost about 12 lakhs for one set. How can I survive? Luckily, like, you know, as I was in this uh, event, somebody to, uh, told me that his child is training with him and I've been paying $100 per day. So today, our Indian top coaches are charging $100 per day. And just because I am their father, I have given free training and got them to this level. I only say today that like, you know, our CM should, you know, understand our needs because it is a matter of our pride for the state as well as for our country and to support them because now the now we do not wait no more because i mean we are in short of time the training programs need to be done and not only internationally in europe because there is a big fleet the training programs are different international coaches are different so i uh, i hope that you know will be uh will be get support from the cm which i'm looking out from their personal resources because there are some pending bills 
which are still almost about eight months and nearly you know 12 to 15 lakh spending in how again this time like just for these two events i have lost another five lakhs you know staying in bombay taking the coach boat all the necessary things it's been very difficult which what is about the association that is there uh well of course they are i mean they are also trying now our new president who has been elected from goyoting he, he seems to be very supporting but since like you know the proposals are put but still at it is you know he's working on and i think so it will come but more important is if we get in time when we are in need of that is most important so what is the training now is going to happen now see now my programs are like you know there is one event in thailand and then the european circuit starts which is in say on 30th of may there is one championship basically my target is now there is a world championship in august which is the olympic qualifier so if they train over there and i mean if they reach to that level so tomorrow we might have hope to get qualified in india for the olympics yeah no. no, stop journey yeah uh, the journey was good and good experience and what i believe is every time when you fall it's my principle that we will come back again so <clears throat> today uh, of course i'm happy at one point and at the same time i'm disappointed also because dane has not qualified for this event uh since the asian games has been postponed earlier where dane has won the asian game trials 2021 in rsx which was most uh, physical and demanding sport in olympics unfortunately it has been dissolved and replaced by iq foil for 2024 olympics our visions are always higher and i my targets are also asian games and olympics is my priority this i have started in 2010 because most important is from the grassroots level we need to develop and according to the development program there are so many targets which we have to fulfill and we have done the fulfillment today it's not so easy to uh, a goal to reach for the asian games for the second time it it is like a historic moment for for our state as well as for our country because katya is the first indian girl who have represented in 2014 for the olympics she made it again for the asian games in 2018 and she have done it again in 2023 so i mean there is so much dedication there's so much time which is involved you know to reach to this and and just because i am their father i am their coach and i am their financer and all this i have done not because of my interest it is basically it is interest in my country and for my state so today like you know i have supported from them in all the difficulties when they are down you know i have to them in all the difficulties when they are down you know i have to motivate them and to keep up to that level just because they have followed my footstep just because i was a sailor earlier which i have guided and they have loved this sport which is most important sometimes some people are forced into some sports but they are liking the sports but sometimes which i can't deliver it for them that's the time the disappointment comes today i know that dane was caught up with dengue for the first selection trials which has happened in november which he was well prepared but unfortunately 
just because of this dengue just four days before the event has lost him completely because psychology is one of the most and biggest weapon in any success but there was you know lots of thoughts which was traveling around in his mind and then i said not to worry you know things will happen and then we had uh, our uh, christmas which is like you know i'm a small businessman which my family are you know united we run together i have to look in those grounds also the the second selection trial was in january just after one month he had to recover from his uh, dengue which was badly affected which did not allow him to put his performance so and soon after the evidence seven to eight days there was a third trials basically the federation has finished all the three trials within a month uh, so within three months earlier the selection criteria was every two two months within six months they could finish the program why they could give the opportunities for the other sailors okay you have done this okay you have got a better option for the next one train hard get back to you but in this situation it was so early and that's how things went off and most important is like you know i could not give them a brand new equipment which was still you know trickling in his mind he has been using for a year one equipment he been training and the same equipment he has been using for the competition it is so difficult for me to survive both the kids 